Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fully Booked, the Hidden Gems author podcast in which Craig Touch and myself, Roland Hume, get to discuss this crazy business of self-publishing that we are in with some very special guests. And today we have a very, very special guest who I'm delighted to have here. This is romance author Lillian Munro, who I actually know from way back. I've, uh, I've worked with you before and done stuff with you before, and I am so excited to see how your career has progressed and how well you've done and what a great job you're doing that's why there's one particular thing about your career that was so interested to talk to you about today but it is a great pleasure to have you here Lillian and uh, how are you doing today thank you so much for having me I'm doing great yeah I'm excited to talk to you guys well that is fantastic and of course we wouldn't be here without the man himself the owner and founder of Hidden Gems and an author himself Craig Touch Craig how are you doing I'm doing well thanks Roland uh thanks for for coming on Lillian uh, uh Roland told me about your success and and specifically about um, the fact that you translate your books into other languages. Um, one of the ones being German, which is I think the one you've uh, had the most experience with, if not the most success with. Um, and that's sort of a subject that a lot of authors haven't really tested the waters on. They don't really know, um, you know, I, I definitely never translated any of my books. I never even really thought about it. Pod, or not, okay, audiobooks for me was like as far as I went. So, um, and I think that's true for a lot of authors. So I think hearing from you about your experiences it would really be helpful to, to other authors out there to get an idea about, you know, what it's done for you in terms of sales, what the process is to do it, how you picked the languages you wanted translate into all that good stuff so you know what do you what do you have to say about all that well um yeah i am really excited about translations i sort of took the opposite tack that you did um i audio i have some sort of mental block and like i find it so cringy <laughs> like i just can't listen to my own books <laughs> so i really struggle with that so i sort of when the decision came, because the cost of producing an audiobook and the cost of a translation are pretty similar, I sort of went to uh, translations. And I had heard from other authors who translate things that German was the best place to start because it's the biggest market besides uh, English. Or maybe it's just the biggest market on Amazon kind of thing. So it's the easiest to get into as an indie author. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm happy to talk about it. Do do you want me to just start with like how? <laughs> well, listen, I mean, you know, okay. you can start with anything you want, but but yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you've given us sort of uh, you know some of the some of the idea of of you heard about it, you went that way instead of audio. I personally, I, I agree. I don't listen to my own books on audio. I've only uh, had a few of them translated or not translated. Uh, recorded and I didn't do it. I was approached by another company who bought the audio rights and they took care of it all. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even done that. But this that's, was way back when, well. you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I get it. Um, the question is, you know, when you, if you end up hiring or you go somewhere else or whatever, then, you know, is it worth it and what makes it worth it and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, like give us an idea of, um, you know, how you got started, who, you know, what you did to, um, to, to get started and what have the change like what has what has the result been like you know in terms of you know I don't, you don't have to necessarily go into raw numbers but like did you see uh, x percentage increase uh, you know more sales versus less you know that kind of thing was it worth it yes <laughs> yeah yeah basically well yeah it's worth it i would say um it's pretty expensive uh, one audio one uh german translation costs me about five thousand dollars us dollars um so it's pretty pricey i think other languages can be less expensive and i think that i could probably do it cheaper but i took the attitude that i wanted to find reputable translators i wanted to get the books proofread or edited um and i didn't mind paying a bit more because i didn't want to do it twice you know because you hear these stories about people getting scammed basically where they hire a translator the first 20 pages are translated and then the rest is just like thrown through some software and then you basically like your book is worthless 
or your translation is worthless because it's like unreadable. So I really didn't want that to happen. So I probably pay a premium for that with the translators that I hire, but that was a decision that I made basically. So um, how to do it <laughs> is uh, basically, well, how I did it, I talked to some author friends to kind of get a gauge on so some of them who were already translating books. And so they basically across the board was like, start with German because you'll make the most money in, in Germany. And obviously there's probably some variation of like who makes the most money where and which, which audience responds to your books and that kind of thing. But I started with German. So I just started on the German Amazon store. And much like you would look at the English Amazon store, I basically went to the bestseller list um, looked at the top sellers. I tried to see if anybody had credited their translators and authors can be a little bit cagey about, um, sharing who their translators are because it takes, you know, eight weeks to translate a book and they, they might have a huge backlist that they want to translate. So once they find somebody they like, um, you know, they, they don't want to share that person's name or whatever. Um, so, but what I did, I just started on Amazon and, some people do credit their translators, um, you, you know, either in the book. So I would download the book or open the, the look inside thing and see if they had written anybody's name or sometimes it's credited actually like on Amazon, you know, in the author where it says the author name at the top near the title. So that starts this sort of long process of <clears throat> emailing translators or, or you can go on Upwork, you know, and, and you can, Upwork or uh, Fiverr, but I, I only used Upwork. So you can either, yeah, reach out to other authors, look in forums or Facebook groups or whatever, but that might not be that successful because people don't really share them that much. Look on the Amazon bestseller lists to find names. And then the anybody that you find, you want to ask them what they've translated before ask them for links to books that they've translated to make sure that they're sort of in the same genre that you translate. And then what I did was look at the reviews because even if the reviews are bad for the book and like German reviews are, are way harsher than English reviews. <laughs> so like you're probably not going to get that like 4.7, 4.8 stars out of five over there. But um, the important thing about the reviews is that they're not talking about the translation. You know, so if, if a translator, sends you a link to a book and all, and all the reviews are like one star translation was terrible i couldn't read it like that kind of thing then that's probably not somebody you want to go with but if the reviews are just talking about the book being terrible then like that's fine <laughs> you know or, or yeah. obviously like <laughs> the, yeah <laughs> the takeaway I'm there are some that the book doesn't need to be good <laughs> no that's a joke yeah. that's a, a complete joke yeah like it's don't true. all i'm trying to say is like don't just look at the stars like you have yeah. to actually and you you know just run it through google translate and you can like even if it makes like it's not like grammatically correct or whatever you can make sense of what the review is trying to say and then there are some uh, reviews that do talk about the translations as a good thing, you know, and they'll be like, this was a really good translation. Um, so those are good. And then, it, and then uh, it's just a matter of hiring them and paying them. Um, that must have been an incredibly, like, I don't know, I, I get anxiety about doing anything. So like to jump into <laughs> that must be, uh like a big leap of faith i mean especially you're going to get translated into a, another language which is like it counts ambition i couldn't read a book in german and know whether it's accurate or not and it's like wow yeah, yeah. it's definitely scary was, yeah yeah and that's what i was going to say too like unless you speak the language you're putting a lot of faith in the translator to do the right job like i mean how do you even know that they're translating it properly uh, i mean sure yeah they can send you links to other books first of all do you even know that they did the translation of those other books yeah or they're just sending you to some random german books that they they read and thought were well done you know so it's like i would be thinking to myself hey you know they might have just this could be just absolute gibberish for all i know right i guess you could pop yeah. it into google translate like you do with the reviews and make sure that it sounds similar <laughs> to your book but uh, yeah it's it's definitely i mean you can check things i hired some people on fiverr like you can get samples done and then you hire somebody to just read it and be like 
is this okay? <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, and, or if you have German friends, obviously, or um, if they send you a link to a book, you can email that author, you know, and make sure. So it's definitely a lot of work, you know, to, to find somebody that you can work with. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a bit of trust involved for sure. And I guess that was one of the reasons that I definitely wanted to hire uh, proofreaders and editors afterwards. And proofreaders in Germany charge a lot more than they do in English. <laughs> so like, you have to be prepared for that. Well, actually, like, these days I pay quite a bit for English proofreads as well. But I, I think I pay about like a thousand bucks for a German proofreader. For a, for a book that's like 80 or 90,000 words. So that's, yeah, that's fairly standard. It's a, I mean, one cent a word is, is I think sort of the, uh, well, yeah. I, actually, actually, I guess, you know, for proofreading, you'd expect it to be cheaper. I think for copy. Yeah, that's right. I'm, yeah. Now I'm thinking yeah. about it. We charge, we charge half a cent a word for our, for proofreading. Yeah, so, yeah it would be about half that in English. Yeah. yeah. Right. So be prepared for that. Like it's, it's not going to be cheap. And I think that's just like the going rate. In Germany, so when you said, you or I'm getting ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> if Lily is getting ripped off, let us know in the comments down below. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you, um, so you said like five thousand dollars for the translation. Is that the translation alone, or is that including your proofreading and all these other, you know, fiber and the cover? Yeah, that's, people that's and like the total cost. Stuff. That's the total yeah. cost of a translation. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, because cover. I didn't even think about that. You want to get the cover redone? Do you get a whole new design, or do you? basically just ask no. them to translate the words and then you give it back to your regular cover designer and say just change the words <laughs> yeah i've just gone for the for the usual for the same cover as english but just translated right um but i mean that's something that i've thought of you know i've looked at i've looked at the top lists and because you want to see both what other people are doing and also um what the top covers look like you know, for example, in Germany, a lot of, I, I mean, I haven't looked in a few months now, which is like my mistake, but uh, I first noticed that a lot of books mo looked more sort of like trad style, you know, like a lot more illustrations and that kind of thing. But then you don't know if that's because they are traditional, you know, traditional, or they're actually from publishers. Well, I mean, you can check that. Or if it's, yeah, you don't know. I mean, you can test covers. You can get two or three done and then like throw them up in a Facebook ad and see what works. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. You know, we talk so much about uh, cover design and the importance of looking at what other people are doing in the top books to make sure that you're, you know, hitting the right marks with the audience. And, uh, you know, that's not even something that I thought of was the, the idea that um, other markets might have a completely different cover style that's popular for their readers. And that's that's just another thing that you have to sort of research then, yeah. Yeah, but it, it doesn't actually mean that like your style of cover won't perform well. You know, it's like for, here's something that I've thought of, right? You know, in English, we do like keyword heavy subtitles a lot of times. In Germany, that's not popular. And I've had translators tell me like, we don't do that here. And my attitude is like, that doesn't mean it doesn't work though. <laughs> like, Ooh, I like it's that. valuable real estate that to put like keywords for search and for people to know exactly what your book is about, you know, and it, it just because other people are, aren't doing it doesn't mean that it won't be effective kind of thing, or just because it isn't the convention. So like, but these are all things that you can test and you can see what works and you can change it. Like we can change anything about all of our books at any time, you know? So I, I don't know, I try to keep an open mind about those things, but then again, I've just gone for the English cover, so. But it, it yeah. strikes me that Germany would have like a sim slightly similar taste. I mean, when I was over in Germany, all the TV shows were like American TV shows dubbed in and British mm -hmm. TV shows dubbed in. And I think it seems like quite a, a cultural good match that maybe it wouldn't be in other countries. So maybe that's why the covers would work and, and be and translate well. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But you know, like even between the um the US and the UK, sometimes there's different covers or different titles. So different titles, yeah, for sure. But anyway, 
Yeah. Like if you get the English cover, uh, which is translated, usually it'll be a lot cheaper. Like your your cover designer will charge you like nominal fee. So something to think about. And if it's been effective in English, like there is a good chance that it's going to be effective in another language. Like you don't have to start over. Yeah, and like yeah, like you said, and you can change it. So that's one of those things. It's probably easiest to just go with what was working for you, assuming that it was working. And listen, if you're translating your book and putting the investment into translating it, I would hope that you're doing it on a book that has been successful for you, and you're not just like, well, this book isn't selling, but it'll sell in Germany, I bet. So you know, like <laughs> that's not like don't double down on your mistakes, right? You take a book yeah. that's working. And then see if you can make it work somewhere else. So yeah, I, I would I would agree that to me, on the face of it, that seems like the best strategy is like, okay, I'm gonna take everything that's working for me now, because I know it's working, move it over. And then if I think something isn't working, then maybe I do some tweaks. Like my English cover yeah, exactly. isn't, you know, it's not selling that well. So maybe I'll change my cover or at least look at what covers are selling, you know, in Germany. Yeah, so, or yeah. trends change or whatever. But the, exactly. the thing is, is that like the workloads kind of mushrooms when you start doing these things because you're in all it's a new book, you know, and a new book that you have to sell, that you have to prepare. So um I don't and know, I, you kind of want to make it as simple as possible. I was going to ask about that. So you're you're publishing another book on the KDP dashboard and, and stuff like that, but obviously there's a, there are German elements. And so I mean how much difference mm -hmm. does that make the the process? Well, you forget how much English you actually use in places other than the book itself. <laughs> <laughs> like all your ad copy. I mean, I use a lot of excerpts in my ads, so uh, I can yeah. usually pull those from the book. And like, you can tell like which paragraph is which, you know what I mean? I was like, gonna say you're, words that are hoping, similar. <laughs> you're hoping you pull the right excerpt, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think the blurb must be difficult because blurbs oh, yeah. are such a nuanced, like to the the elegance of a good blurb is so difficult, and then to do it in German and to know that, so that's you know that's actually that's a good point. That's something that I haven't tested, but you could because I usually write multiple blurbs for all my books, and then I test them on Facebook, and then whatever one gets the lowest CPC, I'll I'll pick as the winner, and I'll put that on Amazon. But you could do the same thing in German. You could write a bunch, get your translator to translate them, and then test them. That's a good idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm so, good for something. Because the blurb is a big, is a big thing. It is. It's one of the biggest for yeah. sure. Absolutely. So while you're writing that down, uh, what is the idea? Like, give us an idea of um, the kind of sales that you would get in the German store. Like, at least in terms of you know um, how it compares to you know. Uh, how you're selling in the US store. So may, you know, if you're selling X amount of units, are you selling like 10%, 50% as many, something like that? Or how does that work? Is it, is there a sort uh, of a... I don't know percentage wise. I know I that mean, you it can was give like us raw numbers if you want. <laughs> but, or, or yeah, are you at least, may, are you making your money back that, you know, the- I am, the yeah, now I am. So I, I made the mistake, like we were laughing about like, don't, don't translate a book that doesn't sell or whatever. Like I, uh -oh. I didn't. I'm gonna put my foot it's in my sold. mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I sort of made that mistake, right? Like I translated a series, a trilogy that sold okay, and when I started translating things, I in my head I was like, well, this kind of sells better in the UK than it does in the US. And so maybe it's kind of like doesn't resonate with US readers. So I'll try it in Germany kind of Which thing. And at the that? same time, that was the love hate trilogy. Oh, I don't think that I think that's one I haven't read of yours. Yeah, it, it's like um, enemies to lovers, obviously, based on the, sub, the title. Um, so that one has not made its money back, which sucks. <laughs> but it's a risk but the series that have sold well in overall for me so i've also um translated my royal series which is an accidental baby series of uh fairy tale retellings that does well and i also have another accidental baby series and then now um i'm in the process of translating my two best-selling series that i only wrote in english 
like a year ago. So, so um, what, which one did you start with? Did you start with the the love hate one? That's, well, I have two translators, so I was doing two at the same time. So I was doing the Royals and the Love Hate series. And um, yeah, the Royals sells. But the it, I will say my books don't just sell. Like I had this expectation, right? And I had this expectation in English as well. That was like, I'll publish a book and like, and it'll be a bestseller. Like I won't have to do anything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like I thought that I would just zoom up the charts and everything would be great. And I heard all these people saying like, oh, Germany is like a gold mine. Like you're gonna make so much money and all this. And like, it didn't happen like that. And, and it, obviously I was disappointed, you know? But then uh, what I did was I just started advertising. So I advertised, I, I still advertise on, Facebook mostly. And I just took the same process that I use in English, the same creatives and images that had won in English, and just, you know, basically tra transferred them directly to German. And like, and then now, now I'm making money. So sorry, I never answer your questions about numbers. Right now, I, I think it's about 10. Uh, here, let, let me just look at a it would be higher than 10% on a book to book comparison. Um, but I, but then again, I haven't translated the two series that, uh, your bestsellers. Yeah. That actually sell these days. So I'm probably like profit wise right now. I, I have 12, tra 12 books translated in, in German. And I think I probably, let's see, I'll just tell you like the numbers. Well, that's fine with us. If it's fine with you, I'm sure the readers or the listeners would uh, appreciate hearing. Okay, numbers. so yeah, um, probably like just under ten thousand a month. Ten thousand dollars of income uh, of yeah. a German of German only, or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, I for most people that would be, or a lot of people that would be a, a large amount of of income. Uh, is that German I mean, it's dollars a lot for me as well? <laughs> <laughs> now, is that, I, I don't I know. Maybe, I, should, say, maybe I, I shouldn't have said that. I don't know. But no, yeah, you know and what? then like subtract subtract advertising from that. So I like, and then I also like am constantly translating books, right? So yeah, that's I gross. Five obviously. that I haven't translated yet. Yeah, gross. I mean, that's not, so, you're not netting it. Yeah, yeah. I don't spend that much on advertising, like probably uh, under $100 a day. So like my my total, my profit on those books that are currently published is probably around five grand a month, I would say. Um, but I'm obviously like spending about that much translating new books. So if you were to take the German side of the business as like an independent arm of the business, it's probably currently breaking even or running at a slight loss. But once I publish, I have five books now that I'm just like waiting to publish. Um, once those get published, it'll probably start uh, making money. And I've been, I've been publishing books in German now for just over a year. So, it, yeah. it's a I mean, those, it's a, a long-term -term strategy <laughs> i mean per book those are one-time costs and the book doesn't just yeah. earn in one month so yes i mean obviously unless something catastrophic happened it would make sense like if you're making five thousand you're spending about five thousand on a book like eventually when you catch up your your now you don't have any more books to to translate but they're going to still keep earning and even if they you know start dropping a bit that's all profit at that point so yeah i was gonna say exactly. can we pause for a second when you said you regretted like saying the number out loud uh i think that i think everyone listening to this like should look into your career as a thing of inspiration because i think it was six or seven years ago when i first met you you were making a thousand dollars a month and now look at you and you've done that through persistence and hard work and doing stuff like this and you're like an example to other authors listening in that if you do the work and you approach it like a business and you you do the right thing the there is and you have talent as a writer there's like uh, a stratus there's no end to, to what you can achieve yeah thanks roland that that makes me feel better <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> 
I, like, I hope I don't sound like some, I don't know. Oh yeah, I just I just throw these up and I make 10 grand. Like <laughs> no, that's not really how it is. I mean, yeah. And and, and we no, hear it, that's not how it is. But yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're right that treating it like a business is is a big part of it. And it's hard to do that because you're so close to your books, you know, and and you spend so much time with, on them. Um, but you have to be kind of ruthless with, with yourself, I think, or make those decisions like me translating that series that probably shouldn't have been translated at all. Like in reality, I've written, I don't even know, maybe like, I, I mean, I should know this. I've probably written like 10 or 12 series. And really there's like three that make sense to translate. You know what I mean? So yeah, but I mean, the the uh, the other side of it is the more books you have, and I'm sure that this uh, translates to other languages just as it does for English, the more books you have in your catalog, the more you're going to sell as a long tail later when people discover you from, you know, not only are there multiple points of, of discovering you through all those different books, but once they do, there's more books for them to go back and read. So I don't think yeah, that it's a absolutely. mistake, you know, yeah. yeah. I, I'm more meant to, as like a starting point because it was like, mm -hmm. it was basically like a, a, a failure right off the bat. And that's, you have to sort of just be like, okay, like, I'll just remind myself that this is a long term thing. <laughs> like, I'll remind myself that they're all just bricks in the wall. Like, you know, and meanwhile, I'm looking at my dashboard being like, ah, I'm <laughs> minus 20 grand. <laughs> like, what have I done? <laughs> Uh, there aren't very many businesses like this where you have those kind of expectations, though, because it is a case of like you mm. hit it right and it's like boom overnight, whereas if you don't hit it right, it's yeah. not. And so I think we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves as authors to make every single well, book release a hit. But you could look at it in terms of like, you know, a Silicon Valley startup, right, where they're just burning money because they believe. Look at Amazon. I mean, they lost money forever you know, until just a few years ago when they started breaking a profit. And it's not, I mean, people didn't stop pouring VC money into them. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. it didn't matter, right? Nobody cared because they knew that eventually they were building something that would start earning money. And I think that that's sort of similar to what you've done. Like, you know, you had a belief that this would work and you were willing to put in the money, take the risk, build something, build a big business, build a big catalog of books and it's paying off for you. Yeah. It's, it's, I find it hard when it's your own money, you know, yeah, for sure, and, for sure. uh, on, on both sides, like both spending and making it, you know, because I don't know, it just feels like so much pressure or, uh, or I don't know, like you, yeah, it's just hard. It just feels like, Every every decision kind of feels important sometimes. Joe, we but yeah, but it's great when it works. We yeah. interviewed a, a nice chap the other day called Terence Leahy, who'd written a, a romance book, and I think Craig and I both kind of were astonished by him because he he's got a regular job and he writes for pleasure, and he writes what he wants to write and publish it. And we it was kind of like we love people like you and I. We all love writing, but at the same time, we put so much pressure on ourselves by making it into our careers. And then it was always, yeah. I always got jealous of listening to him, like, oh, I'll write one book a year and it doesn't really matter if it doesn't do well. And I'm like, that's. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like it as a career though. Like yeah. <laughs> the lifestyle is pretty nice. You must be very proud of <laughs> like, yourself for what you've achieved. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, that didn't I'm... sound very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and the lifestyle. Yeah, you've just come back from Ireland, and you're in Australia now, and obviously you're from Canada. It's like you're and Thailand. You've yeah. been on and stuff like that. You managed to turn it into quite a, quite a, a life that a lot of people might like. Yeah, most of that happened before the writing, but but you're right. I'm more men, just like no alarm clock. You know, yeah. I can set my own hours, like that kind yeah. of thing. Those are yeah the best best things and until you have kids. Yeah. Then. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we have to have, to get up for something. Um, okay, so you mentioned that you are looking at other languages, or you've started to do other languages. So, what was the process in deciding to do that? Is uh, have you have you researched it at all, or is this another like, a, hey, I'm just going to give it a try. I don't care. <laughs> do it, uh, we'll see what happens. A, a column B. <laughs> um, yeah. I like I've talked to other authors who are really, really successful and who have translated a ton of books. And like the conventional thing that they say is like, start with German, 
and then French and Italian are about the same revenue wise and then Spanish comes next. Um, and obviously these are all with the perspective that you're gonna put them on Amazon and maybe wide. Like one thing, one thing to note is that a lot of people say that um, German is really good wide and here's another thing I did. I was like, oh yeah, okay, I'll make a ton of money putting this love-hate series wide because it didn't really work on, on Amazon. I'm like, obviously, it also didn't really work wide. <laughs> <laughs> so like, that was another little uh, um, trick that I played on myself. <laughs> but uh, I, basically, I'm just going to listen to what the other authors have done, you know, and I'll do it in that order. So I just got yesterday two French books back from the translators, my big bossy mistake and big bossy trouble books, which have been really successful in English. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I personally am going to start um, just on Amazon just because the workload is like so much less than when you have to upload multiple places. And like, uh, like you can call it laziness or whatever, but you just, you got to do what you got to do. You I know? don't think it's laziness. I mean, it is <laughs> no. such a lot of mental effort to go wide. And yeah. I mean, and especially in romance, you do, I mean, I don't, I, how, how do you do in KDP? Yeah, it's like 80% of my, of my income. Yeah. So in that case, it may, like, you'd have to make 80% of your income wide to make up for it. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. It's... And I mean, one thing that people have said previously was the bonuses because before German was the only marketplace that had bonuses but now I think they've rolled it out everywhere but they've also changed the structure of it so um, we'll see how that plays out but I, I generally don't like making decisions based on you know bonuses or like things that aren't sort of guaranteed then again I am in KU so like none of that is guaranteed. But, <laughs> right you know. well but why not give yourself the chance right because I mean sales yeah. are not guaranteed either the success of your book is not guaranteed so True. if you're gonna pick it why not pick it in a place where the upside is higher right so mm, yeah but um if so you said 80 percent in KU is that in uh U.S. or is that in German or both that's in U.S. Let me let me check here. Um, yeah, I guess you know I don't even know what the process is because I know you know if you want you can sell your book on all the different Amazon uh, locales. You could sell it in Germany in English. I think I had you know I used to get sales you know from all the yeah. different stores. So what's the process if you have on different like a different uh, translated copy do you have to I, I imagine you upload it as a completely new book um, do you have to can you do that through your dot com dashboard do you have to create a, a a German one or like how do you do that it's it's exactly the same as English so you just go to your normal KDP account you click create new ebook exactly as you would the only difference is in two places at the very top on the first page I think there's like a uh, it asks you what the primary language is. So you pick whatever the language is, German, French, or whatever. And then on the last page, in, on the pricing page, there's a drop down menu that says, where do you expect most of your sales to come from? And I think that makes it like the primary marketplace or something for that book. So you just pick germany.de. And then you link that through uh, Amazon Central, to the other cop versions of your book, or how does that work? Or do you do that? Uh, no, mine are not linked to the English version. They're just like in individual books. You would, but maybe you wouldn't need to. Do yeah, they're not connected yeah. to to the different translations. They exist as like completely separate books with separate ASINs, which I guess makes sense because no one goes to an English version of a book and it's like, I wish this was in German. Well, yeah, uh, but um, but I mean, the paperback has a different ASIN too. Um, and they're linked, and the auto book. Well, that's I don't even think that's an ASN, but it's it's linked. But you're actually, right. the, like, the you paperback the is an ISBN, and then the audio book is another code as well. So those three codes would be linked, but because the book, right. the foreign book, has a completely different ASIN, then it would exist in its lonesome. So you wouldn't link it to your paperback, for instance, unless you translate the paperback as well. Do you translate the paperback as well? That's another question. Yeah, yeah, you just get the cover done as paperback. It's it's kind of um, 
you have to wait obviously until you have the finished man translated manuscript to get the final page numbers but right. yeah i get them all done in paperback as well it's just i mean it's just the cost of the cover basically right so and do you find the paperback sales mm -hmm. uh are any different let me check i should i should have <laughs> checked all these about, before i should have asked you all this before and uh you know um yeah, sorry i, I, I just didn't had know. last month before let me go all time yeah. we so appreciate your, your panda sharing well that's the thing really i'm refreshing. taking it I'm taking advantage of the fact that you're so so open with your numbers. Most authors aren't. So yeah, well, that's that's one of the things that I used to love. Like, I mean, I'm not really on Facebook. I sort of stopped going on it maybe like 18 months ago. But I used to love that when people would just tell you exactly how much they make. And like back in the day, like, you know, it's funny, Roland, when you were saying like, oh, oh my career has been you know so explosive and stuff because like i can assure you that's not how it feels <laughs> from <laughs> from this side <laughs> you know um but yeah like to uh definitely so to answer your previous question it looks about uh ku versus sales it now i do have uh three of them that are wide currently but it's about 60 40 to ku and print sales compared to 80 20 uh, is what you said yeah. for english right so 60 40 yeah. is 80 20 so that's good yeah yeah uh yeah i have sold 300 paperbacks good so yeah yeah that's really that's good pretty good all the time and now sorry uh, and yeah. that's across all um uh, all so books german? in germany yeah in, and yeah. then what about in in the us do you sell a lot of paperbacks um, uh, I sell a few or in English in total. It depends on the series. So I have a series of um, midlife books and I sell way more paperbacks in that in that series. And I don't know if it's because the covers are not like, you know, M Manchester like <laughs> sexy male model face. you know, they're they're more like um rom-commy sort of looking. So I don't know if people are more inclined to buy those because they're not gonna be like, you know, embarrassed. Of, I mean, of if they're midlife it. books, they might be appealing to an older demographic as well. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, eh, let me see here. And then as after a, your, oh, oh yeah, you see it? print, print, yeah, it's as a percentage, it would be pretty, it would be pretty low. Um, sorry. On another note, do you think people like to get your midlife uh, series as a paperback because it's a paperback you can read on the bus without anyone judging you? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because like I've seen a lot of people come out with like discrete covers or whatever in um, in romance and those seem to be gaining popularity. Um, so, yeah, I think that's definitely a thing because like, I mean, I read a lot of romance and I wouldn't want to walk around with like an oily set of abs on the front of my cover, <laughs> the cover you know I'm, yeah i'm Personally. sure you can buy fake uh jacket covers just jackets life. yeah yeah um, um so print sales in for me in the u.s were like one percent let's do a like for like comparison and i'll i'll uh i'll tell you a percentage wise this is quite I'm exciting. Curious. We're getting it in real time. Yeah, real time updates. I'm curious uh, once we get that, what the experience is, you know, going wide with translations. I don't, uh, I know on um, Kobo. Two, currently sitting at 2.2% for print sales. In so you're, but, okay, so like, you're selling I more paperbacks. Yeah, relatively more, but I didn't, that was just like my all time numbers and i didn't start doing paperbacks until like two or three years after i started writing books so it could be skewed well uh, you're already you already have a higher percentage of paperbacks in germany but you haven't translated all your books into german and you um have only been doing the german for less time than the than the yeah. uh, us so already and it's already higher so i think that that, mm -hmm. that tells us a lot yeah. actually so 
Um, so yeah, what is the experience then with with the uh, with wide? Because like I said, I I know Kobo. You know they have they have a similar sort of thing where you can like change the, you know the URL yeah. .ca .uk whatever. Um, but I I can't really think about what all the other ones do. So do they have a big presence? I guess they all have uh, different translated stores. From from what I hear, uh, the biggest bookseller in Germany is Tolino, which you can access through draft to digital So this was another thing that I did, which was um, maybe, you know, not the most efficient profit-wise, but the most, you know, is I just did Amazon Direct and then draft to digital for the rest for those three books. But like, once again, I'm not selling very many books like in that series in Germany. So <laughs> I don't know if that's the best. Oh, that's uh, the only series that's wide, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, all the other ones are in KU. Okay, so that actually that's another point though that I that I didn't really think about is the fact that um, I'm thinking of the big ones, you know, the Barnes and the Google and the Apple and the Kobo, but then there's other ones that are specific mm -hmm. to different countries. So Tolino. Yeah. For, Germany, which Tolino sounds Italian to me, but what do I know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's interesting. Uh, but listen, Draft to Digital is is a great service, and that that I would I use them all the time when I was wide. Um, so yeah, definitely. I, uh, I started actually um, doing Draft to Digital print. Started uploading all my paperbacks to Draft to Digital, and like I get sales there. I've only started that the, for the past like two months or something, um, but it's been good. I'd recommend that. Right, yeah. and I mean you. So you write uh, romance, and we were talking about um, earlier, sort of before we started recording, that um, you know whether or not this would be good for other genres. And uh, you know, Roland mentioned that Mark Dawson talks about Germany as being one of the ones. Uh, you know, he's translated a lot of his books into Germany. He does really well, right? Is that what you're saying, Roland? Yeah, no, that's, ex I know uh, in his Facebook group and stuff, he was, I think at one point, and maybe I'm talking out of my ass, uh, he was making 25% of his income at, from Germany, or he was, holy, it, holy. Was, it was very significant, and he uh, and he lent very heavily into advertising as well, and it seemed to work for him, and I know that uh, books by Lee Child, we we're always talking about Lee Child, they're massively popular in Germany, and I guess they're pretty simple to translate because they're very short sentences. So I think there is like a vibrant reading community in, in Germany that's perhaps stronger than mm -hmm. anywhere else. Although I just came back from France and I saw a few authors I recognized their romance books on the book on the, the bookshelves in places like oh, yeah. French. Like, and I in, hadn't seen in the that authors or no? no, I think they were I think they were kind of like the uh traditionally published romance authors that you would normally only expect to see stateside. Yeah, right. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's the well, start. Um, that's the thin end of a wedge. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. I mean, I think it's a really exciting space, and for some reason, I find it a lot easier than audio. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> I don't know. It feels more familiar, maybe. But it, there are definitely some challenges, and it's definitely work. Um, another thing I do is newsletter. So that's that's like one of my main things in English as well. So I started a def a different. Um, German newsletter. Each of my books has like an extended epilogue, right? Or like a bonus scene, you know, like after they're married and they have babies, you know, like an extended happily ever after kind of thing. Um, and you have to sign up to get that. So I got those translated as well, put them on a new page on my website and do a new um, newsletter and then just start slowly building that. And my plan is to do that in every different language, which like, Again, it's just more of that sort of mushrooming thing and of like workload and is one of the reasons that I do um, things like go to draft to digital instead of direct for all, all, all of the stuff. And the people at draft to digital are great. Like every time I've emailed them, they've emailed me back like within a few hours, you know. I think it's worth yeah. pointing out that you've just a lot of the stuff you've described throughout your career, not just in the translation thing, is very methodical and like doing the right thing. It's like getting the newsletter set up. I think there are a lot of authors, you know, maybe sometimes we we need to settle down and, and take a leaf out of your book and actually be like, OK, we need to get the structure of the newsletters fixed up. We need to get this done. We need to get this done. And again, approach it like a business. 
And how much of yeah. that, that do you think is due to your success? You're a very prolific writer as well, and you write very good books, but also you seem very organized. Yeah, I mean, I think that's huge. That's probably like the biggest thing, um, because you don't you don't really know what book is going to be pop. Well, sometimes, like all the books that I've written that have been popular. I got the idea for the concept of the book and I was like, this is a good idea, you know, whereas all the ones that haven't sold have been like, well, these seem popular. I'll just try writing one, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, being methodical and treating it like a business is like a huge thing because like from, from my perspective, I haven't had that sort of like unicorn book that just like brought in millions of readers and like all of a sudden I'm successful kind of thing. Like, it's always been like, okay, I wrote a book, I sold, uh, you know, a hundred copies. <laughs> like it didn't work really enough for me to live off. So what didn't work about it? And then a lot of times, like the, the hard thing is that it can take more than one book in a series. So you, you kind of have to write like three or four of them before you really know if it's, it's kind of working. So, but yeah, being methodical is, um, and and doing the basics over and over and over i think even in writing in writing the actual books you know hitting the obligatory scenes hitting the beats like you you just have to get comfortable kind of with the repetition i think and you're very good at that i've read because i've read like a bunch of your series and like they and you are rigid to the structure and that's what makes it very mm. satisfying but at the same time they don't feel like products like with your royal series, you could see that there was a lot of heart that went into that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with like hitting the beats. Like, how how satisfying is like a really tightly plotted romance novel? Like, they're so good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or like yeah, a you... really like a a thriller that like really gets your heart pumping. Like that's because yeah. it it hits the beat and the pacing is like well done. You know? Yeah, you absolutely want to hit the beats. You just don't want to yeah. look like you were trying to hit the beats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the difference, I guess. Uh, now, yeah. unfortunately, we are approaching the end of the hour. So, uh, oh, Lillian, I think we could end up talking to you all night because it's been fascinating yeah, finding out all this stuff. And this is, a, this is a topic we really haven't delved into at all. So really appreciate that. Craig, do you have any more questions for Lillian before we wrap things up? I agree. This has been a, like a really, really fascinating and fun discussion. And I think that it's really helpful because it, it, it is really something that is becoming more popular. Um, it's becoming obviously more lucrative. Uh, you know, we live in a global world, so there's no reason why, you know, we can sell things anywhere in the world. There's no reason why we can't also make it better and a, a better experience for the people in that in that part of the world which will then lead to more sales, which will then lead to, you know, a blossoming of our own career. So I think, uh, you know, it's really been great talking to you about it. And I think yeah, a lot of so much for people me. are gonna take away something from this for sure. Well, Lily, yeah. so whether you are stateside or in Deutschland, where can people come and find out more about you? You can go to lillianmonroe.com. Lillian only has one L. L I L I A N. Um, a -N. <laughs> uh, or you can just find me on Amazon. You can uh, Google me. And I am also on um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok a little bit, but really like email me. That's the best way to like get me, get an answer from me. Lillian at lillianmonroe.com because. Uh, I'm not so great at social media. <laughs> like, your message might not get seen for a few weeks. If you well, we will be sure probably. to put links to, to where you are down in the description yeah. of this video. And if you are listening to this or watching this on YouTube and you like what Lillian had to say, make sure you leave a comment down below and let her know. And if you haven't already, click that like button. If you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to us. We really appreciate you tuning in and supporting us as we make this podcast happen. Um, I think that's it. We will be back next week with another special guest. Thank you very much and goodbye.